Thanks, Paul. Hi, welcome to the UCM Short Film Showcase. I'm Dr. Mark von Schlemmer, and today I'm here with Nicholas Wallace, producer and director of the film Lasting Love. Welcome. So I'd like to ask you about the, the film. Um, what was your inspiration to make this particular film? Uh, so when I got the idea for this film, uh, I had recently just started a relationship, and I'd just recently been back home to visit my grandparents. and. Um, <laughs> You know, I kind of wanted to do things right, and um, I noticed that there, there aren't a whole lot of specific guidebooks on how to do relationships, and so I decided that I wanted to uh, basically interview uh, different couples and different stages of their lives and see how they, how they figured out how to, how to be successful. And you started with your grandparents? I started with my grandparents. Uh, they, they've been married since... Uh, for over 60 years, wow. and uh, they met. They didn't even know the same language, and that was that was a I figured a good jumping off point for for a documentary. Nice, nice. So, what was the most surprising thing you found in the making of this film? So, the most surprising thing is, as I interviewed each couple, I expected to learn a little bit less because I, I started off with an older couple, and then. Um, a couple in their 40s and then a couple that isn't even married yet and I expected to learn less with each couple and I actually learned more <laughs> from each couple. Um, the youngest couple surprisingly uh, had the most knowledge and they haven't even been through right. nearly as much stuff and that was that was kind of good to hear. Interesting. All right well thanks for joining us today and now let's watch the film. Roll it. I don't know what's the different experience, you know, but if you love each other, you'll make do somehow. That's, that's the way it is. I don't think you can love him more, as I do now, you know. Why? Well, because I love him that much already. So it was fairly quick for me. I don't know. Me too. Me too. I knew fairly early. Uh, I think that was evidenced by the fact that we just stopped dating anybody else. There was I wasn't looking for anybody, and she wasn't. And um, we were always very happy with each other, with mm -hmm. the exception of having to separate yeah. when we had to leave. And that was about the only time we were mm -hmm. not happy. And so, uh, yeah, we were very comfortable. Again, we were trying to like, not really. Yeah, we like, didn't talk wanna, about it. Or? We didn't want to like, cause you know everyone knows that couple that just like rushes in and you think they're just fools or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like we didn't want to be like that, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, you know, can't stop a freight train. So. I think we said like I love you like after like two weeks of dating or something, yeah. cause we we. We were like, I like you so much, and we'd say stuff like that, and then we got to a point where we said, oh, I adore you, Like, I we'd adore avoid you. saying I love we, you, because yeah, we know that's the point. Yeah, we'd say everything else, yeah, <laughs> so like... we'd say, like, everything else, and one night, we were just, like, hanging out, and I, like, said, like, oh, I just adore you, and he's like, why don't we just say it, like, he's like, I love you, and he just, I don't know, and I was like, well, I love you too, and we just, like, decided to kind of embrace, embrace that. I used to go to the PX in the commissary there at the uh, Seabach Air Force Base in Germany. I was, I was in the Air Force, and I would go to the commissary, and just a lady there, German lady, they, they worked there. She said, I had a friend I wanted you to meet. I said, well, okay, for the one night I went to the nightclub, and this is the one you want to meet? And I told her, I got a girlfriend <laughs> named Rosemary in, in, in Texas. And she looked at me like, what? <laughs> and from then on, uh, off and on, we see each other. Just a while before we start going together. Yeah. But from there on, it got worse and worse. 
And finally, uh, before I left Germany, we got married. We met through a mutual friend. I was in a fraternity uh, before I came there, and so I joined that same fraternity on that campus. And uh, a friend of hers and I got to know each other, and he said uh, that we needed to meet one another, and sure enough, we did. And he was right. We needed to know each other, so it was good. It was good. So he's leaving out a lot of details. <clears throat> My best friend and I showed up at a frat party that he was playing at. He was in a band, and it was a mixed frat party. And that's where we originally met. Um, but Mr. Manners over here, Mr. Charismatic over here, I think gave me one dance and then left. And I didn't even know his name. One day we went to a football game, and afterwards he asked me, he's like, do I make your life terrible? And I was like, what? <laughs> Why? And um, he's like, because like we're always hanging out all the time, but I told you like we couldn't, I can't date and stuff. Um, and I was like, I mean, no. And then that's like when he like told me like, I have feelings for you and this might not be true and I might actually want to date and stuff and then we held hands. <laughs> I wanted to date. Big step. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to date. I can't even remember what we were talking about. I don't know. And it was like totally not like a romantic thing. It was just an oral conversation. But then like we both turned our heads at the same time and our noses kind of like did the thing. We were like a lot closer than we thought we were. Yeah. And then I was kind of like, oh crap. We were like, oh, <laughs> oh no. And she made the move, which I, I was thankful for because I was petrified. Because <laughs> I was like, what do I have to lose? Like, if he doesn't want this, whatever. Like, but if he does. Cool. <laughs> and so I went home to live with my parents and he remained at school and uh, he didn't have a car so he would borrow his fraternity brother's cars every weekend to come see me and I mean there just wasn't ever really we we passed letters we wrote letters back and forth and there was just never really real letters real letters they're in the Paper, attic yeah. yeah I have yeah. a box of them in the attic um, yeah you know we just never really had any doubt after that mm -mm. no we just were I, I know it in my sister-in-law, boys say, don't you come back with a German girl? <laughs> well, my mom and dad didn't want me to get married to an American, well, they call it American gangster. <laughs> my father, he said, eat the German bread. Stay here and eat the German bread. leave early because we had a concert to go to. It only seemed right. Uh, the Who was doing their reunion tour that year, and so we went to see uh, the, I don't remember who was with them, but we went to see it the Who matter. at uh, at Arrowhead, right? Yeah. It was at Arrowhead yeah. Stadium. And so we drove, uh, by that point we had purchased a, a little Chevy Chevette with mismatching front quarter panels. It was an ugly little thing, and that's what we could afford, and so we bought that, and Sunday, of course, decorated it for us with cans, and uh, riding on the windows and that kind of stuff and we drove away from the reception that night in that vehicle and went straight to the concert and we got free t-shirts and all kinds of stuff because they were selling them in the streets as we went in there and mm -hmm. they just were giving us all kinds of stuff because we they were so mm -hmm. thrilled that we had just gotten married and here we were at the concert and so it was a, yeah. that, was a that was a great way to yeah. relieve that tension. Yeah. I said she's pretty but I don't know her so I got to get to know her. To know her. We did, little by little, we got to know each other, did stuff on weekends. I had a car, we'd go all over K-Town, all the area. Go to the movie? Yeah. We got to the tree, and she's still talking, and I'm like standing there holding her hands, and I like kind of abruptly start telling the story of this tree, and she's like, oh, that's sweet, and then she starts to try to say something else, and I'm like, how am I gonna do this? And eventually, I, I asked her, um, do you want to come back here with me every two years? And she was like, what? And then I got down on one knee and I was like, do you want to come back here with me every two years? And she didn't even say yes, she just started crying. Yeah, I started crying. We both started crying. <laughs> you know, uh, I had drinking issues and uh, that became a stress reliever for me. 
it did make me better. And uh, we had all three mm -hmm. kids. Yeah. And uh, it was during the time when I was beginning uh, to come to the Lord. And uh, I was wrestling with a lot of bad things in my life, uh, the drinking and other issues that I was having. And money still wasn't better. And we were better at pushing each other's buttons. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we had gotten so distant. Um, I think some couples have that issue when you get so wrapped up in your kids, you're, you're taking care of everything, that there just isn't time for the two of you. And it, mm -hmm. it really got bad to where I really thought I was about to lose her. And I think that was part of my whole faith uh, change was the fact that I realized I was about to go uh, to a really dark place where I was going to lose a lot. I feel like any relationship could end if you let it. Like if we stopped trying, if we stopped communicating, if we like let things go, if we became better, like, you know, we could get to a point of breaking up. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we just don't let ourselves do that. Just like love him so much that like I'm not gonna sacrifice that like I'm not gonna do things that are gonna put this in jeopardy and mm -hmm. um, you know because you can push a relationship to that point of breaking up but why would you mm -hmm. kind of tough very tough yeah you know <coughs> you can do the job and get pregnant right away because I got pregnant uh, in Germany with, uh, with Sylvia we lived in Corpus Christi and I got pregnant right away. And I didn't like it. <laughs> you know, well, I had to learn the language and... Yeah, that was not easy. Learning the language and for her. I, I knew I would have been happy down in Texas. Turn the key, step on in, rest my head, but I'm not home. There's nothing for me here. There's nothing for me here. I think that, like, when you get married, that this is the person that you're going to have for the rest of your life and they're going to stay the same and they're going to stay this like perfect you know person that you think they are in that moment for the rest of their life and I feel like that can really destroy a marriage it's like they don't realize like you're signing up to change with somebody you're not signing yeah, up to to be the same and yeah. to be the, to have that same relationship and I feel like that's something that we've learned is like you, we're still both people and we go through things and there's um life is hard and we have highs and lows but like you, we do it together mm -hmm. um, and we work through it together and we're working towards like you know mm -hmm. a life with each other and you're like laying the foundation for that and if you um, don't lay the foundation well like it's gonna it's gonna shatter and break one day so maybe I'm struggling with the kids and he's struggling with the budget and side by side we start struggling and and we're really so focused on getting to the other side of the struggle that we lose sight of who we are to each other and it becomes a it becomes a we're it becomes we're roommates right and we're just doing this thing called life um trying to get to the next good thing and uh not realizing that somewhere along the way we were losing who we were you had a heart attack mm -hmm. culminate into the final attack um, and uh, you almost died I mean I said I'm not ready I'm 46 years old I don't want to be a widow and you know what he said he said oh, I know you'd be fine and I said don't ever say that to me mm. ever say that to me and I think that illustrates something in our marriage because he always thinks I'm stronger than I am, and I always think he's stronger than he is. But that illusion's got to be there because he was able to go through what he went through because he knew I'd be okay one way or another. You got to be supportive. You got to support each other, no matter what. You know, like you might be hurting yourself, but she's hurting worse. And you got to forget about your hurt and worry about your spouse. And that's when they really need you. So you got to be there for. Them. There'll be time that you're hurt and she needs you, her support. Sure, yeah. So it, it, a lot of, you know, understanding each other how you feel. We know she hurt you for some reason. Like when I lose my dad, she was there to support me. Or when she lost her dad, we were there to support her. So 
<coughs> it, it's kind of tough. Would you make them? Because you have a lot of up and down, like, a lot of up and down. <coughs> Hopefully by the time it's over, it's all be level. What you think is love is a feeling, but I feel um, what I've learned is that it's not. And that's something I think that was different with him is like of course I loved him and I felt all these things for him but it wasn't a feeling it was like a fact it was like I'm choosing to love him like I'm going to love him I'm not and I'm like we are in love and stuff but learning that like love is a choice I feel it's like really shaped the way I view view it because if you base it off your feelings like they're gonna change and they're gonna go up and down and there's no guarantee with yeah, feelings. Yeah, there's no consistency there. And I feel like um, love is a choice, and I choose to love him every day. I love you. <laughs> <laughs>